we are in prayers. Ask the Lord to open your eyes to the knowledge of the truth. Let the Lord give you understanding of this gospel of truth. Let the Lord open your eyes. Let the Lord prepare you for his coming. Appreciate the Lord and worship him. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him honor. Adore his holy name. Father, we thank you. We worship you. Thank you for the privilege you have granted unto us. The great grace you have granted unto us. Your mercy which you have released upon us. Father, we say thank you. We worship you. Thank the Lord that you are here. It is a great privilege. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am so happy. Why am I so happy? I am so happy. Why are you so happy? I know that I am saved. I know that I am saved. I know that I am saved. That is why I'm so happy. Many, 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 many are coming to my Lord. Many, 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 many are coming to my Lord. What shall I render to my Lord? What shall I render to Jesus? What shall I render to my Lord? Brother, come, let's go now. Sister, come, let's go now. Praise Him. Tell the Lord the level of your joy before Him. You are in the mood of prayer, expressing thanksgiving to the Lord. Father, Lord, we are happy, we are joyful. May your spirit, O oh Lord, give us direction. May your spirit, O oh Lord, open our eyes. Speak to us, divine, in a clear and still language for the edification of our souls. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. We are considering the value of information to the individual, the family, the church, and the society at large. As we are aware, information is power. Nobody lives a successful life, both spiritually and even in the secular world without having a fair understanding of his environment. You must know your environment, you must understand the temper of the moment, the, the, the dynamics of the times. And so information is the representation of knowledge to a person who is in need of aid for dissemination to others. That is information. What comes to you by way of knowledge, how it is presented to you, and how it is being disseminated to others, to other strata of the society, viz. the family, the church, and the society as reflected in our global village. For the world has become a global village because of advancement in technology. Praise the Lord. The world has become a global village. And so the absence of this, the absence of information to the individual, to the society, to the family, has resulted into a greater and damnable cause that will befall such an individual upon lives of people destruction of properties and even the ecosystem because there is no information and so the value that information brings to the individual is immeasurable prophet Hosea spoke about this in the book of Hosea chapter 4 let's turn to the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse number 6 the Bible says 
my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no more, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of their God, I will also forget their children. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The value of information to the individual cannot be overemphasized because we need this to guide our way, to guide our spiritual way. Anything we say here is to prepare you for the coming of Jesus Christ. And we are going to tell you how information available to you will help you stand strong. And we'll tell you about those informations also that will destroy you, the ones you look at as advancement in technology, the ones you think they are good for you. You access them every day. You watch them on the internet. You listen to them through WhatsApp or Facebook or Twitter or whatever. There are informations that are meant to destroy you. And there are informations that are meant to preserve you. And we will go into the scripture to look at from the Bible days how information has kept people. How vital information released to people has kept them leaders individuals, kings, prophets, in that order. So information is very, very vital. Till today, right from the foundation of the world, it has been like that. Until now, it is like that. And it will continue to be so. Praise the Lord. We will single out an individual that deployed the use and power of information to attain significant success and to survive a turbulent period. The life of David comes into mind. In 2 Samuel, chapter 15, the life of David comes to mind. And how David used information, deployed the use of information to survive a turbulent period in his reign as king of Israel. In 2 Samuel, chapter 15, Verse 32, the Bible says, And it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai, the archite, came to meet him with his court rent and earth upon his head. Unto whom David said, If thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be their servant, O king, as I have been their father's servant, the hitherto, so will I now also be their servant. Then may thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. And has thou not there with thee Zadok and Abiata the priests? Therefore, it shall be that what thing soever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abiathar. Behold, they have there with them their two sons, Ahimaaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them ye shall send unto me everything that ye can hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Great wisdom from David. David preparing means of gathering information. This was a trying time in the life of David. Your own son has moved against you to take away power from you. Absalom moved mightily against David to take over the reins of Israel. In his very watch, praise the Lord, in his very watch, David utilized the power of information. And I make bold to say this actually is the foundation of modern day espionage. Because spying has its origin in the Bible. It depends on how nations deploy this, negatively or positively. So espionage had its foundation from the Bible. And that is why till today, the, 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 the spy world cherish and respect 
the espionage network of the nation of Israel, the Mossad, they still remain very, very top in terms of intelligence gathering. So we can see from the Bible days, spying had been a very, very essential ingredient in gathering information. And David used this effectively to checkmate Absalom. Praise the Lord. David used this to check because David knew who was Ahithophel. He knew the kind of man that Absalom had taken upon him to stay with him. And so David had to use wisdom. David applied his heart to wisdom. Who shall I go with them? And if they ask you, tell them your loyalty is to the king. I was with your father because he was the king. Now you are the man in charge. I have switched over my loyalty to you. And Absalom took Hushai into confidence. Praise the Lord. In 2 Samuel chapter 17, in verse 15 and 16, we see here, the Bible says, Then said Hushai unto Zadok and to Abiathar the priest, those and those did Ahitope counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and those and those have I counseled. This is how we shall counter the counsel of Ahitope that will have destroyed David. Ahitope knew David very, very well that he was a mighty man in battle and brought a, a suggestion how David would have been killed instantly. And the presence of Ushai preserved the life of David, the value of information. Praise the Lord. The value of information. At the family unit, this is needed because you need to tell your children what they need to do, what is good for them, especially in the world of technology, in the world where children are glued to the internet. Is that information essential to you? Are you checking out or searching the internet to do your assignment in school, or you are searching the internet to check out pornography? Amen? So you must know and understand the danger in this time. The world is running out on its own. The, the world of information superhighway. Information is the end thing now, the key. And there are positive and negative information. There are information that will destroy you. There are information that will preserve your spirituality. Praise the Lord. I was sharing with a friend of mine, I say, I want to even do away with WhatsApp. But we have information we share among brethren because it has become a deadly platform. I am not on Facebook, but I have an account in Facebook with my picture. And that is what the enemy is doing because the devil himself knows the importance of information. He also deploys it to destroy souls. And so there are many things going on in the world that are not known to men. If you know this and understand this, the better for you. Praise the Lord. So for the, at the family level, we need to prepare our children for this battle because the battle is fierce. Satan knows what he is doing and what he wants. And so if you are prepared, the battle will be made simple. So as children, we must know that there are two worlds. There is the world of the unbeliever and there is the world of the children of God. Amen? The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says, Be not... <laughs> And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Other versions say, be not be conformed to the standard of the world, because the world has a standard for its people. Some other people call it global best practice. This is what is known. If you don't do it like that, you are not of the world. And the standard of the world is that as a young man, you have to dress this way, you bob your head, you do punk, so that you can be seen as somebody who is abiding by the standard of the world. The Bible says, stay away from that. Don't abide by the standard of the world. For that is not for my children. Don't love the world. For he that loveth the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of eyes, 
don't let it be seen among you. So tell these children, children, gain understanding of this, that there is a standard of the world. The way you, but these artists that you are emulating, these musicians that you are copying their lifestyle, is that the way to go of the Lord? That is not the way of the Lord. That is the way of the world. Praise the Lord. That is the way of the world. The world has a standard. There are uh, scriptures that have opened our eyes to this knowledge. And if you search into this, there are many publications in this ministry. For those of you that are coming in here for the first time, there are publications for young men raising up godly children to work in the Lord's vineyard, bringing up godly children, and the challenges of children in Christian families. All these are books that will give you understanding on how to, to be trained as a young man, how to grow in the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, for the family unit, it is a miniature globe, a miniature society. Just as we say in the parlance uh, of legislators, the legislature, the committee in the legislature is a miniature legislature itself. So the family unit is the entire society reduced to a small unit. What happens in the society should be built from the beginning of the family unit. So what obtains in your family can define your role, what you do outside there. If you receive bad teaching at home, you will transport them to the society. And that is why at the family level, we are expected to understand these things. Praise the Lord. At the family level, you must receive this understanding for the preservation of your soul and to prepare you for eternity. Praise the Lord. The power of information to the family. As parents, we know what to do to our children. The world is so polluted. The world is so polluted that you hardly can find a family that is giving time or giving attention to training the children. Because this information are not available to the children, they grow up to do things their own way. A child, a young boy of 20, will tell you many things about the world. For that is the standard of the world. In the United Nations, there is a pattern, they call it uh, sex education. They teach children about sex. These are dangerous information. Dangerous information. Young men Google into side, devilish side, and they understand pornography like job. I had to apply my heart to wisdom. You follow them with, with, with as if you are, not, you are careless about this thing, until you are able to get somebody to the knowledge of the truth. And to the glory of God, we see that some of these children that are seeing these things for the first time, here, I am sure the Lord is going to do a new thing in their lives. Amen? They will live here not the same as they came. Many don't understand that there is still Christianity existing. Many young men don't even bother about Christianity because they have lost hope in the church. Why? Because the requisite training needed to bring up a child in the world of the Lord is not there at the family unit. And so the child has lost focus. Praise the Lord. The child has lost focus and goes to do things his own way. Hallelujah. So if you want to know what the devil is doing in the world, take a peep at a particular family or at most of the families we see around. God is not there. Once the day breaks, everybody finds his own level. Mother is going his own way. Father is going his own way. The children are doing their own things. Because concerns of the life that we are in, concerns of time, challenges of time, has put everybody on his toes. Hallelujah. We are talking about the value of information. You need to know where it is now. You need to know where the world is now because the world is in the hurry to fold up. And that is why God brought the wisdom of this end time that he has visited this generation with a ministry like this 
to give you understanding of practical Christianity and prepare you for his coming. No information could be more vital than what you are hearing from here. Praise the Lord. If you are hearing this, you have now become an ambassador of your family. You have become an ambassador of your church. You have become an ambassador of the society. When you go, preach these things you listen to. That other people too will understand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Similarly, in Joshua, we are talking about the power of information. The power of information to the, to the individual. The power of information to society. The power of information to the family. The value. And how leaders of all utilize the power of information to address challenges of leadership and to prepare themselves for a righteous and holy living, to also perfect the purpose of God and the will of God in all that they do. Praise the Lord. In Joshua chapter 2, verse 1 to 6, we are still talking about the power of information. Joshua chapter 2, verse 1 to 6. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of shooting two men to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a hallow's house named Rehab and lodged there. And it, it was told that the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in Hitha tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rehab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into the house, for they become to search out all the country. You know, the history of the nation of Israel was all over the neighborhood. Everybody was dreading the nation of Israel. Nobody wanted them near them. Once you hear, you become afraid. Ah, destruction has come upon the land. So they became worried. Ah, there are some Jews, some Hebrews that came into this land today. Go search out that prostitute. Let us know what she's doing with this man. Amen? And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shooting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out, whither the men went, I want not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. Rahab hid these two spies, because she had a duty to do so. Otherwise, these people will be killed. Praise the Lord. The information these two spies went to get from Jericho was to enable the nation of Israel conquer the city. And as Bible accounts follow later, we now understood the importance of the information extracted from the city of Jericho. And so, it is very, very vital to know about your surroundings. As a human being, you should know about your, neighbor, your neighborhood, the people you see around. What do they do? What are they up to? What are they doing generally? You must have an ear all over the place to understand what your neighbor is doing. So the value of information through espionage is very, very important. Praise the Lord. Very, very important. So in verse 23... We see that the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun and told him all things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord had delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. Now they have sufficient information. They can take action now. They are well informed. Always act on the basis of information. Verifiable fact. Hallelujah. Verifiable fact. Now they had information about what to do. 
the Lord gave Joshua this wisdom. Praise the Lord. So the value of information is very, very essential to the individual, to the church, to the society at large. Information is very, very vital. We need to learn from dissemination of information. You, you could be passing out wrong information. Get to know the consequences. Get to know the, the impact such an evil information you pass around can do to the society. Get to know also the positive aspect of information that you pass. The Bible gives us understanding about passing information that will preserve souls. And that is why we have the Bible as our manual. The church now, in 2 Timothy, praise the Lord. In Matthew, rather, chapter 28, the Great Commission. In Matthew, chapter 8, verse 20, let's start from verse 19, rather. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded thee. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Can I hear the church say, Amen. This is the great commission. This is the information every believer ought to pass across the world. But is this information being passed correctly in most churches? Is it being passed correctly? No. Some is being passed halfway. Some is not being passed at all. Another thing is being done there. In few places, the information is being passed complete. And in these few places where this information is being passed completely, these places are being hated. Because the truth is always very bitter. Amen? The truth is always very bitter. Pass the information complete. The Lord God Almighty has given us a commission. He has given us a message to take to the world. Are you delivering this message complete? Or the message is half-baked? And I can tell you without fear of contradiction that majority, preponderance of messages of this gospel of truth that is supposed to have been passed is being passed halfway. Others say we are called to preach uh, wealth, prosperity. Others say we do healing. Others say you are not preaching it all. The Bible says teaching them all, everything about the gospel that concerns preparing somebody for heaven. And that is why it's very, very difficult for people to believe the truth because it's not been taught them and their attention is taken away from Jesus Christ and is focused on the ministers or their pastors, their general overseer. And that is why they miss the complete information in the Bible. My pastor say, what about that who cannot, that person that cannot read? His entire hope is on the pastor. And the pastor himself needs to be taught these things. Amen? The pastor needs to be taught these things. Just as in Timothy, 2 Timothy, it is a commandment to all that we must disseminate this information to all for the purpose of salvation of souls of men. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, the Bible says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. What you are hearing here, the information you are getting here about the coming of Jesus Christ, about the rapture, about preparing yourself for heaven, go and share with others who don't know. Maybe you are coming here for the first time, you have never heard about a holy living. Is it possible for a Christian to be holy with all this temptation all over the place? Temptation of money, temptation of immorality that is smelling all over around. 
temptation of covetousness, temptation of pride all over the place. Is it possible to live a holy life? You have come here that it is possible. It is possible. So go and teach others also. Those who are willing to know, share these materials you see here. When you, get, go to, when you go back to your village, you go back to your city, you go back to your community, share these things to others. The rest, leave it to the Holy Spirit. The rapture has been delayed because this truth had been preached halfway. It's, it's half-baked truth that had been preached. And that is why Jesus is weeping for the church. That the church I die for. And the ministers that are called by my name are doing this thing. They are turning the truth upside down. Praise the Lord. So, this truth that you have heard, this truth that you have learned, teach others also that you are saved is by the grace of God. Will you allow others to be destroyed? Will you allow your brother that doesn't know? Share with him. I, myself, have a lot of... What do I do? I just simply can't can add up that I get to know these things and I, even in the position to witness for Jesus Christ. It's unbelievable. A wretched, a wretch like me, a rotting person like me that I could witness for Jesus Christ. It is the grace of God. Everybody say it is the grace of God. It is the mercy of God. And so, do the same. Go and share these messages. Follow people with wisdom. Don't look at a sinner and begin to condemn him. Don't say, ah, please come. Do you know the danger of what you're doing? Do you know that Satan has gotten hold of you? Go apply your heart to wisdom. Gradually, the person may come to understand his state of rottenness. He by himself will know that really, I am not a Christian. Just as I had said in my testimony before, that I didn't know I was not a Christian. I was a churchgoer. You go to church, you come back every day and continue in sin. After church service, you go back, the entertainment you receive in church, you love, ah, the service today was good. This pastor was very entertaining. Ah, he made me laugh. He made my day. And you continue. Until the Lord showed me mercy. Maybe you are here for the first time. You do not believe that it's possible to live a life that is unblemished. Here, that is what the Lord is doing. It is an uncommon ministry. Just as you had our father, our brother said, our pastor said, Pastor Dapo, that this ministry, the ministers, the international director the Lord has prepared, the project had been there long ago, right before he was born. And it is often said that a prophet is not respected in his hometown. If Nigerian nation had known what the Lord has bequeathed to them, bequeathed to Nigeria as a nation, the, Lord, the, the, the entire nation would have been all over this place. I'm telling you, because we are talking about life in eternity. Those of us who come under the mentorship of this man of God, we know what we are talking about. I learn here, it is here I learn humility. The power of information. I learn humility here. When I see somebody becoming so proud, I laugh at him. This man is in ignorance. So this thing you learn, teach it also to others that they may understand. The doctrinal teachings on adornment is seen by some churches as a denominational teaching. I was sharing with somebody about adornment. He said, oh, are you from Deeper Life? I said, no, I'm not from Deeper Life. I have never, I have never been a member of Deeper Life. But I have read this from the Bible. Praise the Lord. Many people look at these teachings as if it's a teaching of a denomination. Because you need to read this word that you can pass it on to others. Let them understand. Show it to them where it is in the Bible. A colleague of mine that we walk together, sit together on the floor of the Senate. I saw some big, big rings and, and I asked him because I joke with him. I touched the ring and I said, what is the use of this to you? He said, well, it's good. He likes it like that. I said, but do you know this is a sin? I said, he dismissed me with a wave of hand. He said, where is it in the Bible? I said, come, 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 because we're in the chambers. We're now walking to a tea room. 
I said, do you have Bible in your phone? He said, yes. I said, open to source, source, source scripture. Open to source, source, source scripture. Open to source, source scripture. He said, hey, the thing is true. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They don't know. Many people are living in ignorance. And that is why the Bible says, read this word continually. Study to show their self approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Know this word that you will stand for Jesus and defend it. If somebody tells you this, explain to him, no, it is not like that. It's not like that. A young man who is from my denomination, that I am told, wrote a book, say, women, where is your jewelry? You can see ignorance. They cite the scripture in Ezekiel chapter 16 to deceive the congregation. And the scripture in Ezekiel chapter 16 is a figure of speech. A figure of speech, allegory of Jerusalem, portraying Jerusalem as giving Jerusalem the image of man, a falling Jerusalem, a falling Jerusalem. And people use this to justify the use of jewelry. They even go to cite the parable of the prodigal son, that the father put a ring on his hand. Is the father of the prodigal son Jesus? No. It is an illustration of a story, even from the hidden world. And that parable is to demonstrate as to us that the power of forgiveness, to learn about forgiveness. Even if the unbeliever will do it, what about you that have been saved, that have been reconciled to me? And so, teach these things to others that they may understand. Most of these churches do not believe in these things. They look at it as a teaching of a particular church. We must return to the Bible. That is what this ministry is doing. Return to the Bible. Go and read your Bible. The pastor you are listening to and believing may even be living in immorality. That is why they can't be bold about teaching these things. They cannot be bold. They cannot be bold because he has a sin in his life. He can't speak powerfully about it. One of our brothers was sharing that, the testimony of a young man who said, it's rare you see a pastor preaching as our father in the Lord because the boldness is unimaginable. It takes somebody who is standing on a clean slate to speak like that. In most of these places, you cannot see it. They cannot because you have a skeleton in your cupboard. The man, maybe he has his girlfriend in the crowd, in the congregation. So how will you speak with authority? Praise the Lord. You cannot. And because it's so practical, I remember I was chatting up a young lady on the WhatsApp. Uh, I understand you are, a, you are a pastor. I say yes, by the grace of God. You know, these people, you have to follow them with wisdom. And I'm thanking God that information on WhatsApp also has its advantage. Because that is how you can even win souls easily. Amen? It depends also on the grace upon your life. Otherwise, Satan can also use it to cause you to fall. Praise the Lord. We are talking about information available to the church. The value of that information. Praise the Lord. So, at best, seek to see the truth. Seek to preach the truth. Seek to witness for Jesus in the manner that souls will give testimony about that which you do, the way you live. Because testimony of men about you is also important. Hallelujah. So, we are talking about the value of information before the church. And so, like I said, many ministers have used wrongly, interpreted the scripture wrongly to deceive the people. Many have used wrong scriptures to mislead others. That I was with a pastor in one of the denominational churches. In the Bible study, on the Wednesday midweek Bible study, so we were reading. Generally, in the study like that, you are free. It's like a question and answer session. So he was teaching, and I said to him, I have a problem with a scripture here that pastors don't seem to make reference to. He said, which scripture? And I opened to Genesis 35, where God, Jacob was 
to go to Bethel with his household, where he asked his household to strip themselves of the strange gods upon them. And he mentioned jewelries, earrings in particular. And I said to the pastor, why is it that this thing is not being preached? And you look at the congregation here, most of the women here, nobody has no earring on his ear. And it is a sin. So when the pastor read Genesis 35, verse 1, he said, I'm seeing this for the first time, but I will check and I will get back to you. It's terrible, I'm telling you. A minister that is ordained by his church to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you are ignorant of the, oh, you can accept it openly in the church. And now see, so this thing is so true. Up to today, the pastor has not got, gotten back to me. Because if he preached that, the authority of the church will get at him. So most of these things they do, they do it to preach, in the, to please individuals, not for the gospel. Hallelujah. Not for the gospel. Similarly, some churches have been misinformed even about the scriptural position on the tribulation and the rapture. The mix of this. Some will tell you that ah, the rapture will come before the, after the tribulation. Some would, but the true position is the tribulation will only take place in the midst of those who miss the rapture. It's very, very clear in the Bible. But a lot of churches are not well informed about this. So these controversies are coming because the people have rejected the truth. My people will perish, will be destroyed for lack of knowledge. They have rejected the truth, and God has also left them. If you embrace the truth, you will know it. Teach it, read it, and the Holy Spirit will guide you. Praise the Lord. For those who are coming here, maybe to this conference for the very first time, there are hundreds of messages on all Christian topical issues that provide answers to most questions concerning the Christian race. Like you heard this morning, the servant of the Lord has written well over 50 books, wonderful books, powerful sources of information about your personal cleansing, about the rapture, about adornment, about what generally all issues about children about marriage about every topical christian issue that you can think about under the sky there are books available here take your time select these books and buy them and one thing once you come and listen to these things this truth if you are going Share with your friends, and if they are very hostile to you, please cut out that friendship. Are you hearing me? Cut out that friendship, because nothing pollutes you like an evil company. I forget this. Oh, you are coming from the program of Holy Night. Forget these people, I beg. That is what you hear from your friends. Because some of them are Satan's evangelists. Just as we disseminate information pertaining righteousness and holiness, Satan has his evangelists too that are disseminating information about the, the journey to hell. They will tell you all sorts of things. How, how, can do, how can a fish live in a river and will not drink the water? This is their language. So be careful about the person you call your friend. Because nothing will destroy you like an evil company. Praise the Lord. We are talking about the power of information. The value of information to the church. Many churches are not aware of these things. They are busy talking about how to live well in the world. How long are you going to live in the world? At best, if you go well, maybe 1995 or 100. Or even 110. In which case you will no longer be useful to the family again. Your children will not have time for you. They are also battling for challenges of life. Amen? So why are you wasting your time? Search the truth. Find out how you are going to spend eternity. Where are you going to spend eternity? Where? The answers are there. 
the Lord brought you here by his mercy. It is the mercy of God and his grace that has brought you here. It's not the kind of grace that is being preached outside there. Ah, we're living by his grace. After all, a man must sin now, but gradually grace, you know, and all that. No. It's the grace and mercy of God that brought you here to listen to this truth. That you hold on to it. As Job will say, my righteousness I hold fast. Praise the Lord. So, this is a place to be. Hallelujah. This is a place to be. Now, if you are going back home, the information you bring, oh, I have discovered the truth. The woman in Samaria went back to the city and started preaching about Jesus Christ. I have found a man. I have seen a man. We want you to be like that. Pass this information to all others who are not aware that believe that it's not possible to live like a Christian. The purpose of Christ is to set a standard for us. That is why Jesus came. Because the world, Satan was almost getting at everybody. Everybody was queuing him behind Satan. Just as you heard our father and the Lord was saying uh, the first day of this uh, conference, that the, a competition, that the, the battle that will come ahead will be between Satan and God. And because Satan has majority, Satan will won. To them, this is a business of democracy. Majority has the day, isn't it? But that is not so. Few are they that follow the narrow path. For the way to damnation is a broad way. The larger majority of the society are on the broad way. Those that are seeking to go to heaven are on the narrow path. So seek to follow the narrow path. Praise the Lord. So Christian must be informed that not every church is a church. Because the devil has his own church too. Propagating ideas of the devil. How many of us have heard about the church of Satan in the United States where it started? Aton Lavid, who founded the church of Satan. Who has heard about the church of Satan? Yes. There is also a church of Satan. Some now is written boldly, the church of Satan. Some is not written there, just as we had our mommy in the Lord yesterday said. Some of these churches are with us here. Their members are our friends. Those who go there, we walk with, we, we, we chat with them, we discuss with them. They go to these churches, but it is a church of Satan. After the rapture, the name will come out clearly, the church of Antichrist. Not the church of Christ, no way. So, what are you doing about this? Haven't had these things that the Lord has shown you mercy to bring you here, to know this. So, what are you doing about this? The church, as a body of Christ, is the custodian of knowledge. Knowledge-based information. But most churches are in the dark, further compounding the spiritual state of their congregation that they ought to lead to heaven. Many churches are in the dark. And that is why God brought about this wisdom of the end time. The holiness revival ministry is God's wisdom for the end time. There was prophecy, as you heard this morning, about this ministry long ago. And it's going to be the last revival that the world will witness before the rapture. Make no mistake about it. This revival will go up until the trumpet judgment sounds. And nobody should ever imagine that, like some of these churches you see, that this minute, no. There are members who find themselves in sin and they fall. Yes. In a journey like this, you are moving, some will fall, and they will leave it, you, you keep going. If the Lord shows him mercy, he rises up and falls off, fine. If he doesn't realize, we have many foundation members that are no longer here because Satan has gotten at them. Satan has gotten at them and had sifted them as wheat. So if you are in this journey, you must buckle up. I know this for a fact. And in fact, for some of us that are here and have business in the secular world, it's a great challenge because you mix with the multitudes. 
you mix with the multitude who don't believe at all in this thing you are saying. They don't believe. I was with our father and the Lord in the meeting somewhere. And when he was talking and I was watching the impression of these people around, I said, if I had known the state of mind of these people. But the gospel is like that. You preach it, the Holy Spirit will start from somewhere. Because somebody you are talking is looking at you as if you are a fool. Unknown to him, he is the fool. Amen? He is the fool, but he doesn't know and he will not even believe you. That is what the devil is doing in the world now. So, let us seek to decimate this information anywhere we go. Spirit ministration. Individuals receive information from God and pass them for the benefit of society. Praise the Lord. Information to the church through spirit ministration. In 2 Kings chapter 6, in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8, then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servant, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing, and he called his servant and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. But Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the ways that thou speakest in their bedchamber. This is information that is passed to the children of God through minist uh, spirit ministration. Elijah, Elijah understands the mindset of the king of Syria and he passes this information. They are coming this way. They are in that direction. Some people have that gift. Praise the Lord. Some people have that gift. People speak with them. We heard about how the Lord is using our mother and the Lord mightily. When the Lord took her to heaven and to hell, even as a sinner. And when she came back, the Lord said, your body will not be your body again. That means any time I will come into your body and give you a message to the world. And these messages have been coming in pure, unadulterated, and confirmed in most situations. To the best of my knowledge, since the Lord brought me to this ministry, I cannot remember Momelinda's revelation that has not come to pass. The contention about the election of Jonathan was true misinformation. People didn't even understand. When God gives you counsel and you reject it, you are on your own. Are you following? You are on your own. So spirit ministration, it comes in a diverse way. How did Elisha go to know that this is what is happening and tells the children, the children of God in Samaria? It's because the Lord spoke through him. It has been there from the beginning. Even in our days, it's still happening because God is an unchanging God. We are the one that changes. God passes information through his children. There are some people that have instinct, some instinct. In fact, I want to share a testimony. A fortnight ago, I was in a political party office. We were talking about some list of candidates that were to be replaced. Some candidates that had gone through election, but because the party thought that they needed an input. And I said, if you replace this one, the people will not be happy. This is somebody who also uh, had his result declared as winner. And so we were talking with one of the party officials, and my own one of my party officials was there with us, three of us. So the man had almost agreed not to temper with us. So when I went in the restroom and I came out, the other third party had gone around to collect a form. And he was telling me that he has not made up his mind to remove the name. 
So the Holy Spirit was telling me, maybe he inquired from this, my other colleague, and must have received his approval. Can we do it so that you can just explain to Senator? That thought kept coming to me. I didn't know that was the truth. So when the man returned, and he made up his mind that he had removed this name, I asked him, did he seek your consent, and you gave him approval? And he asked me, I said, let him just do it. But it was in my mind, it kept ringing. So sometimes the Holy Spirit will be speaking to you. If you are careless, you won't understand. So spirit ministration is still there till our days. Revelational messages in Horimo is a case study. Praise the Lord. All these revelations. Let me tell us the revelation the Lord gave concerning the state of this nation. Even the fear, the palpable fear that came on to personally. Before I got to this conference, I spoke to people who matter in the security architecture of this country. And quite a number of them expressed concern. But what are we doing about it as a nation? And I said to me, let me make arrangements for, for, will I not come for the conference that I'm afraid, afraid of that? So when I remember the, one of the messages that our Father and the Lord preached, I said, well, let's just go. If they're killing you in the presence of the Lord, that is a blessing. Amen? That is a blessing. But when I got here, the message that he preached reinvigorated me. Put a new strength in me. I slept peacefully. I was so happy with myself. Amen? No fear. I'm telling you. No fear. So the revelations we receive here are true, genuine, original. If you ignore it, you are doing it at your own peril. There is virtual, there is almost a camera on everybody. If you hide to go and commit sin, one day it will come up. And this revelation particularly, personally it has edified me and helped me to guide against sin. The temptation will come. We face them always. I see temptation practical. Sometimes I laugh. As a Satan, I have understood you. But how do I save this soul now? This is what is happening. So these messages are coming out as powerful information for us to disseminate to the larger society for them to gain understanding. Amen? So if you have this information and you do not send it through, you do not share it to others, you will be held responsible. Praise the Lord. So share out this information that you will not be held responsible. Now, the power of this information to the larger society, otherwise known as the global community that we see in our world. Like I said earlier, the world is reduced to a global village. Amen? It is battling a global community that is battling with the competitive atmosphere resulting from technological advancement. The superhighway of information is made simpler for everything that happens in any part of the world, in any part of the world, is an instant global knowledge. It's brought to the knowledge of the world through satellite imaging. A camera, a global camera, is watching everywhere in the world. So information is key now in running the world. Praise the Lord. Information is key in running the world. And the advancement in technology has made it so simple, so simple that you can stay here and know what is happening in New York and know what is happening in Moscow. Praise the Lord. The book of Daniel, in Daniel chapter 12, the book of Daniel spoke about this advancement and how man will become so confused about this knowledge, about this advancement in technology. Nothing about the world that had not been said about the scripture. Where we are now, the temper of the movement, the, the moment, the, the atmosphere 
the atmosphere that is in the world now, the proclivity of the moment, had all been foretold by the Bible. Nothing had not been said. It said if you choose to be careless and you do not read the Bible, that you will live in ignorance. In Daniel chapter 12, amen, Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the ways and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. The way knowledge has increased in the world now is an unimaginable thing. But evil knowledge, good and bad. For we know you can be here and your account will be emptied by somebody. That is an evil knowledge, isn't it? But it is happening in our days. It is happening in our days. Satan also is playing key role in most of these things. The platforms like, like we see, that we, we see around, the Facebook, social media, in, uh, Twitter, and all that, WhatsApp groups. Of course, particularly the WhatsApp has its advantage. Sometimes we receive messages that will defy your soul, like I said. That is actually the only reason that is keeping me there. Otherwise, it's also a platform for the devil to get at you. I have seen nude pictures sent to me on WhatsApp. Very, very terrible. But what do you do? These are precious souls that God loves so much, created in this image. Help them to recover them to God, reconcile them to God, and it's going to be by wisdom. Ha ah, ha, you this and that, and the soul will run away. Apply your heart to wisdom, and gradually they will come to the knowledge of the truth. We are, we are all, some of us, we were like that before the mercy of God located us. So the larger society is battling with an atmosphere of advanced technology. Every spectacular event, like I said, in any part of the world is instantaneously known. Every, even these killings that we had, the Gas Brigade, they, every, every major event, the Boko Haram killings in the Northeast, the killings that is going on Niger State, Plateau State, and all that, these images are available. Praise the Lord. So that is the power of knowledge. That is the power of knowledge. So it's instantaneously known, globally through satellite imaging, that is transmitted to a center on the Earth with unimaginable speed of light. This has taken man's attention from God to scientific development, so much that man seems to be mocking God because of vanity of vanities. Man seems to be making, mocking God. We, in the Revelation, we are aware and been told, and it is true, and we believe that Christianity is reduced to the African continent, and in Africa, in Nigeria. But I've had many people mock Christianity. Eh, in Nigeria, you're only talking about prayers. Look at Japan. Look at Russia. They don't know God. Look at where they are. Because they say they have advanced technologically. To them, that is development. But what about spiritual development? They are poor. Very poor. They are very poor. To the eye of the world, they are rich. When you don't know God, how will you say you are rich? People have come to mock Christianity, to mock God, because Nigeria preaches, Nigeria loves God. It is true that a lot of Nigerians love God, but the level of how saved they are is the question now, and that is what this ministry is doing. And that is why this revival is domiciled here, like a launching pad is beginning from here to spread to all parts of the world. The ministry is in almost 70 countries of the world. Almost 70 countries. And it started from here. And that is why you see that Nigeria is a launching pad for this revival. And yet, Nigerians are telling you that, Nigeria, you, you only know, why are you talking only about prayer, 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 prayer? The man of the world, his eye is on vanity. 
He's comparing Nigeria to Russia, to Japan, or to America. Look at America. They are great, great nation. Yes, we are not doubting it. We are not saying it is bad to grow. But let this growth, let this growth be matched with the knowledge of God. So for what shall it benefit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So it is of no essence if we know the world, if we have control of the world, and we do not know Jesus. So the mockery is because our eye is on the development that is going around. Christianity does not preach poverty. Because if you know God and you hold on to this truth, you will never be put to shame. Praise the Lord. You will never be put to shame. So the knowledge of victory that most countries have as a result is as a result of the information they have. Take, for instance, the victory the nation of Israel had over the Arab nations was as a result of the information they had about the military warehouse, or the military hardware, I mean, of the nations, of these Arab nations. I know the story of one renowned spy called Eli Cohen. He was known by an Arab name, I mean, Tabet uh, Hashid or so, so I think the third name. He was brought up in, in Damascus, stayed most, spent most of his life with Arabs. But he's a Jew from the Hebrew nation of Israel and stayed in the Syrian embassy, got, known, got used to the father of the present day president of Syria, Assad. The father of Assad was an embassy attache in London and he got used to him. But he was a spy. Got used to him, encouraged him about the Ba'ath Party, go and do revolution in Syria, and they took over government. And he became a friend of the president, relaying every information about military hardware of Syria. And that is how the nation of Israel had every information. And the 1957 uh, Israel uh, Arab War came like, you know, a, an easy go. What about the Yom Kippur War? The nation of Israel won that war in spite of how it came suddenly on the Day of Atonement. And Israel had opportunity to win the war because Israel had information about the military might of Syria. Amen? So, but gradually the man was caught. And that defines the greatest success in the history of espionage. That he was hung in the Mataya Square in Damascus, in present-day Syria. So the story goes on. So information is very powerful to any nation. We need it. We, we, we need to use it. We deploy it in everything we do. But bear in mind there are negative and positive information. May the Lord give us understanding. May we be conscious of our environment. May we always be looking for information that will keep us on the path of truth, righteousness, and holiness. May we be guided by whatever we see. When we see evil, let us understand. When we see good, we will know. When you see evil, and you have it at the back of your mind that, oh, this is Satan that is trying to get at me, it becomes so easy for you to overcome. Because you know that this is evil and it is a trap for you. I know that there are, there are snares all over the place. But if you walk into a trap and you do not know, then you fall easily. As a public office holder, I know what we go through. Many people, Satan will send different people to get at you, to throw you that. So, but if you know this, if you are equipped with the information, you'll be able to stand and withstand the evil day. May the Lord give us understanding. Let us rise up on our feet and pray that the Lord will bring to us information that will keep us strengthened, information that will build us, information that will guide us to run this Christian race with renewed zeal, to stand till the end. Open your mouth and pray, pray to the Lord that the Lord God Almighty will guide you, will give you understanding of the times. The Lord 
will lead you in all that you do. The Lord will open your eyes to the knowledge of the truth. The Lord will reveal himself and the fullness of his glory to you more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Father, we worship you. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Receive worship. Thanksgiving. Dominion. Majesty. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ask the Lord to reveal himself to you. Ask the Lord to reveal this truth to you. To open your eyes. To know these things. Things that are hidden in secret. That they will be revealed to you. That the Lord has brought you here for a purpose. And may that purpose be established in your life in Jesus' name. Almighty Father, we worship you. We thank you, Lord, because you are with us. And we can see it. We see the atmosphere of dependence on you. The tick of your presence in our midst. Father, we appreciate this great love. Thank you for your everlasting love. We worship you. Thank you, eternal rock of ages. I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise the Lord. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad, I am so glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Hallelujah, he has made me glad, I am so glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Father, we thank you for speaking to us this way. We pray, Holy Spirit, you will strengthen us. You will dwell in us. The Lord, we will run this race with renewed zeal. Thank you for strengthening us. Thank you for your love that has brought us before you in your presence. This is your mercy. Father, we pray that you will continue to do wondrous things in our lives. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.